Hi, thanks for joining me on Believe the Bible. Today we're talking about Bible contradictions, and there's many contradictions in God's Word. Keep in mind a contradiction is not a mistake. It is not an error. It's not a flaw. It's simply conversations or instructions given to different people at different times, and that's okay. We understand that. And today is no different. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, Go ye, talking to the eleven at the time, Judas was, was gone, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So the instructions by Jesus were to go and baptize. But Jesus gave different instructions to the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. And it says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. And I've said this before, that you cannot preach the gospel of the kingdom that the 12 apostles were preaching, that Jesus was preaching, without water baptism. That was required. That was a work by faith that was required. You had to do it. But you cannot preach Paul's gospel, the gospel of the grace of God, with water baptism, because water baptism is a work. It doesn't work, yeah, pun intended. It doesn't work that way that we get saved by water baptism. I know there's lots of sincere, honest, sweet, nice people out there that, that read their Bible and they see that you know, there's verses that um, back up the fact that people needed to be baptized at one point in time. But they're taking these verses out of context and not rightly dividing God's Word and understanding that those were written at a different time to different people. Paul, now our apostle to the Gentiles, given us the grace of God message, says that his gospel did not include, how, did I know, how do I know that? Because of the verse says it. He said, Christ sent me not to baptize, but, that word but is a corner word. It, it changes things. Hey honey, this, this meal is great, but, yeah, what are you gonna expect after that one? You're going to expect that something isn't good and something isn't right with that meal. And that's because it changes things. And that verse, 1 Corinthians 1.17, changes things. And Paul makes it clear. Matter of fact, Paul never once speaks of water baptism in a positive way. The only time he talks about it is in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. But he wasn't talking about it positively. He was talking about it as being a part of the, the dissension and division that was being caused. As a matter of fact, he said, I baptized a couple and some I don't even know if I did, but uh, I, I'm not even sure who I baptized. It wasn't even an issue or of, of importance whatsoever. And people will take uh, Colossians or Romans chapter 6 and think that their water baptism is being said there, but there's no water in Romans chapter 6 because you can't be baptized into Christ's death. And that's what the baptism says that we do. We do. It's an identification into his death. It's not a water putting us into death. That can't happen. Water doesn't do that. I know. Well, baptism is a, a controversial subject. But we do know that the twelve were sent to baptize. And Paul was sent not to baptize. That's a contradiction. And for people who think that there's only one gospel... Well, the Twelve's Gospel included baptism, and Paul's Gospel plainly, with letters on the page, all you have to do is just read it, words on the page, they did not include water baptism. Can't get around that. I don't know how you figure. Uh, leave a comment and explain to me, please, how you think that the work of water baptism saves us today when Paul says he was sent not to baptize but to preach the gospel, which means it did not include water baptism. And water baptism is a work, and Paul over and over again says that we are not saved by works, and that we're saved by believing and putting our trust in Christ and in Christ alone. Just keep in mind that the gospel is that we need to believe and put our trust in the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his blood, was buried, and rose again for the forgiveness of our sins. It's not just believing, but also putting our trust in that for the forgiveness of our sins. That's how we are saved today. That and that way alone. 
from then on, then, Paul says, once we are saved, we are created in Christ Jesus to do good works. That's when good works come, once we're saved. And then, and then and only, can we try to even live a holy and right life before the Lord with the Spirit of God living within us. Thank you for your time. You have a great day.